my name is Sam Vaknin. I'm a professor of psychology uh, in the outreach program of the CIAS Consortium of Universities. It's known as CIAPS, Center for International Advanced Professional Studies. And I am a professor of psychology and professor of finance in several universities in several countries. Until recently, actually, in Russia as well, I, I resigned my position in view of the, of the invasion of Ukraine. But I used to teach her. I've, I taught there for six years. I got to know the people. I got to know the environment. I met oligarchs. I met political leaders, and so on and so forth. And while I, I deeply liked the people, I, I grew very alarmed with what was happening in, among the elites. The elites were being radicalized, nationalized. They lost touch with reality. They became delusional. They became more and more religious in the bad sense of the word. And so I, I really grew very alarmed. In the past two years, I, I taught only online, only you know, distance learning, because I really was very worried about what's happening there. One fact that is often overlooked is that the Russians consider the Ukrainians their brothers. They actually call them small brothers. The Ukrainians over centuries, starting with the Kiev Principality, had an affiliation, not to say affinity, with, with Russia and with Russians, there are many mixed marriages, there are many hybrid populations, there are many people who speak Russian and yet identify as Ukrainians, and there are many people who speak only Ukrainian and actually uh, identify with Russia and aspire for Russian. It's not a clear-cut situation, so it's like it's like an in, internecine fight between brothers. It's like one brother killing the other. It's like Cain and, and Abel in the Bible. This background enhances the trauma involved in any war. It's like an interfamily feud which results in bloodshed and so on. And the trauma in this case is much more enhanced than because the, the, the brutality and barbarity of the war had been unexpected. While I think many people in the last stages, before the war had started, many people anticipated an attack on infrastructure or an attack on the Air Force. So very few people had believed that the Russians will level cities, kill civilians, deliberately target shopping malls and schools and hospitals. Very few people believed that because of the common history and, and, and so on. Even people who were adversaries of Russia or regarded Russia as a malevolent, malignant force, couldn't bring themselves to believe that Russia will target Ukrainians because they are Ukrainians. That has been a massive shock in my view. And this, this places the template upon which uh, trauma evolves. There's a very high likelihood that 25% of the population of Ukraine will display post-traumatic effects. And trauma is, is a systemic affliction. Everything is affected. Your ability to think, your ability to verbalize, your, your ability to trust others, your ability to consider yourself positively, your ability to, to, to believe in a better future, your ability to sleep, everything is affected. Trauma is a systemic event which destroys all modes of functioning. You become less empathic. You are unable to sustain relationships. You have intrusive thoughts. You have flashbacks. Flashback is not just a memory. Flashback is when you mistake reality. You think you're back in the, in the traumatic event. It's not just that you remember the traumatic event, but you're suddenly reliving the event.